Facebook lead ads have been known for producing low quality spammy leads and a lot of business owners have stopped using the leads campaign on Facebook because of this. However, I've discovered three simple things that you can do today to start generating real quality leads again from Facebook. Whether you've never ran Facebook ads before or you have a lot of experience in Facebook ads but just aren't getting the quality leads that you want, either way, you're gonna wanna watch to the end of this video because after you do these three things, you'll start generating not just leads but quality leads from on Facebook at an affordable cost. And in case you don't know, I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency with a mission to help small businesses grow. It's generated over $272 million in revenue for small businesses so far and counting from Facebook ads. All right, so the first thing you need to do to get high intent leads is to create a lead magnet that only your audience would be interested in. A lead magnet is a piece of content that your audience receives in exchange for them giving you their contact information. So a few examples could be a free ebook, a budget or cost calculator, a quiz that helps them determine something about themselves, a discount code on their first purchase, etc. And a few of those examples in action include the shampoo and hair care company having a quiz to help you determine which hair products are best for your specific hair type, or us having a marketing budget calculator for businesses, or this retail e-commerce store offering 10% off your first purchase. Lead magnets are called lead magnets because they attract leads. They give them a reason to give you their contact information, but where most business owners go wrong is in choosing what lead magnet to offer. Your lead magnet needs to meet two requirements. It needs to be something your audience actually wants and it needs to be related to your product or service. I've seen too many businesses meet the first requirement and not the second or vice versa. They'll offer something vague like an Amazon gift card, which is something that people want, but it's not related to your product or service. So the result of that is that you end up with all these email addresses of people who aren't really interested in what you sell. They just wanted the Amazon gift card. And what good does that do you? Vice versa, let's say you offer a free t-shirt with your logo on it. It's related to what you offer, kind of, but it's likely not something that people want unless you're specifically in retail and it's like a really cute t-shirt but you get what i'm saying otherwise you're probably not going to get many leads because that's not what they really want if instead you offer something that is related to what you sell and is something that your audience wants you're ensuring that the people giving you their contact information are going to be actually interested in what you sell making them a higher quality lead and you'll get more of them looking back at the hair product example nobody's going to fill out that quiz if they're not interested in learning more about their hair type and caring for it properly, right? And if they are interested in taking better care of their hair, a free quiz helping them understand what hair type they have and what products they need to treat it would be of great value to them. Let's look at a service business example. Let's say you install and repair gutters on homes. If your lead magnet is a free gutter inspection, you can safely assume that you're gonna rule out non-homeowners who live in apartments because they're not responsible for or worried about the gutters on the apartment building. That's a maintenance issue. So by offering a free gutter inspection, you can assure that the people giving you their contact info for it are interested in your residential gutter services. And if they are, then a free inspection would be again of great value to them. By offering a strong lead magnet, you automatically start filtering out some of the bad leads and attracting high intent leads who are likely to purchase what you offer afterwards. So step one, make a good lead magnet your audience actually wants. Step two is to advertise that lead magnet the right way. What do I mean by the right way? The best ways to advertise a lead magnet are either on Facebook and Instagram or on Google, but you have to set it up a certain way. If you're on Facebook and Instagram, you're gonna choose the leads campaign and set up your campaign ad set and ad like normal. If you don't know how to do that, check out this video next, I will link it below. But before you publish your ad, there's something that we need to look at on the ad level. If you've selected a lead campaign, then that means you're creating a lead form native within Facebook because the lead campaign means that leads don't have to leave Facebook to fill out your form. So you're not sending them to your website, they are filling out your lead form right there on Facebook. The finicky thing about lead forms is when you're setting them up on the ad screen here, once you create one and publish it, you can't go back and edit it unless you had saved it as a draft. So I'm gonna edit my draft demo lead form here. At the top, you have your form type here and you'll wanna select higher intent on that to help our cause here. Then set the intro to say whatever you want it to say. You can see mine is the part about getting a free SEO audit, just as an example, but you'll want yours to be congruent with the ad the person just clicked from. So if you advertise the lead magnet and that's the reason that they're submitting their info, reaffirm that that's what they're getting in the intro here. Now down here in the questions section is where you wanna pay attention. Up top, you've got custom questions and when you hit add question, you can make it multiple choice, short answer, conditional, or an appointment request. Beneath this section, you've got pre-fill questions 
It says, ask for user information. This will be pre-filled from their Facebook account. That may be in the small print, but it is huge information because if you ask for their name, number, and email in this section, that means Facebook is gonna fill out that part of the form for them. It may sound convenient, but here's why that's not a good idea. More often than not, the lead is not going to remember filling out your lead form if Facebook pre-filled it for them. I can't tell you how many business owners have come to us before saying that they're getting a lot of leads from Facebook, but hardly any of them answer when they try to call or email them. Or that some of the leads come back with, how did you get my information? And the business owner is like, from you. You literally filled out my lead form, but the lead has no memory of doing that. Even though yes, they had to click on your ad to get to the lead form. And if you had a custom question in there, yes, they had to fill that out in order for Facebook to submit the pre-filled info. It doesn't matter. They still won't remember it. And I'm saying that from seeing it happen with my own eyes for I don't know how many small businesses. So here's my secret hack to fix this. Delete all of the pre-fill questions except for one because Facebook annoyingly makes you keep one question in this section and add the name, number, and email as custom short answer questions. This will ensure that your lead is having to type out their information and that you get their updated information. Because when Facebook pre-fills that info, it's pre-filling it with whatever info it has on file. And how many of us created our Facebook accounts with a dusty email address that we never check? Guilty. Having the lead type out everything in a custom question gives them a better chance of remembering that they filled out your lead form and it gives you a better chance of obtaining valid information that you can follow up on. You can fill out the remaining privacy and completion sections like you normally would. And remember what I said earlier about not being able to go back and edit the lead forms once you create them. So I would save this as a draft until you proofread it and made sure that there's no spelling errors and that everything is exactly how you want it. If you find an error after you've created a lead form, you'll need to duplicate it and edit the duplicate. Now on Google, ads are delivered at the top of the search results to people based on the keywords, AKA search queries that they typed in and they're marked as an ad with the word ad or sponsored. So for example, if someone types in need gutters repaired, then your free gutter inspection ad can appear at the top of the results. So you can get a lot of high intent leads by advertising your lead magnet on Google, but only if you're targeting the right keywords and therefore targeting the right people. I've seen a lot of business owners coming through who target keywords on Google based on what they feel like their audience is searching. And then they come to us and I do some quick keyword research and find out that the keyword they're targeting is searched zero times a month. So no wonder their ad isn't getting delivered to anybody. So you'll want to use Google free keyword planner to research different keywords and see what your audience is actually searching. Look at the search volumes and go after words that are searched at least 150 times a month. See, you clicked on a Facebook lead ad video, but didn't know you were going to get some bonus content on Google ads too, did you? All to get those higher quality leads, okay? I've got your best interest at heart. All right, moving on to our last step. Step three is asking the right qualifying questions in your lead form. At minimum, you want their name, number, and email, but you should ask one to two more questions to help filter out badly. Running with the gutter repair example again, let's say you're targeting homeowners and you're offering the free gutter inspection as your lead magnet. Some additional questions you can include are, do you own your own home? Or what zip code is your home located in? So that you ensure that homeowners within the area you service are the ones filling out the form. Because there are three main things that typically disqualify a lead. Number one, they don't reside in the area you service, or they want something different or outside of what you offer or they don't have the budget to afford what you offer. Any questions that you can add to your lead form that helps eliminate people that fall into these categories will drastically increase the amount of high intent leads that you get from Facebook ads.